here we are another project and this is a Christmas project at least that's what I wanted it to be <laughs> so you see I got me some Pearl X and Brilliant Gold and this came out of one of those Primo um, special effects packs I think it's like a red um, glitter um, I have my um, blade that I got from Tiny Pandora we have some of my now favorite clay Cern it in lime green And we have another one of my favorites, which is Pardo and Transparent. And we have some shaved ice. Y'all, this gave me some issues. <laughs> I was worried at one point after I had added this to my project, but here we go. You'll see why. It looks like snow. It's beautiful. I loved it, but it gave me some issues. This is the inspiration for my festive holiday video or my festive holiday pendant that gave me the idea to do a festive holiday light pendant. So I tried to take my colors from here, but I was a little off, but it still came out okay. Um, it's a beautiful pendant, nice and sturdy, and it already had a bell attached to it. So we have our three colors here, and we're going to do that same method that I um, do to make earrings sometimes. I love this method because you actually really don't have to, um, you don't have to condition your clay with this method because you're doing so much cutting and um, inclusions and rolling and twisting that eventually it does get conditioned anyway. So there's no need for preconditioning. We're just going to take, I'm just going to take some of my Pearl X Mica Powder and sprinkle just enough into it. I hadn't used it in so long, so it was kind of compacted. Um, there we go, just a little bit. I think I did add a little bit more after this, but we're just going to mix it up until all of the pieces are nice and covered with that pretty gold color. It all looks so Christmassy right now, doesn't it? And we're going to add this beautiful um, snowflake-like ice to the project. It was so pretty. It was so pretty. And it wasn't sticking, of course, because of the mica powder. So once I sprinkled it and picked it up, it was like all up under. But you'll see what I do to remedy that. Let's sprinkle some more. Okay, so this is what I do to remedy it. I get some translucent clay and um, could have put a good amount on top of the clay because you're gonna have to do this anyway because you use the mica powder and mica powder makes things not stick. So it was a needed step anyway. Putting the liquid translucent clay in there not only helped um, the pieces with the mica, but it also helped with this ice sh um, shavings to help me pick them back up and incorporate them back into the project. And you're just gonna see me um, roll it and try to get it all together into one cohesive pack of um, clay so that I can begin to roll it and get it ready for my project. And it was so awesome. It even made a little candy cane, kind of. 
<laughs> gave me some ideas too. So now I'm just going to compact it. I think that I have rolled it out enough. I don't want to start mixing colors. You see as I'm pressing those little shaved ice pieces are coming through now. You can see them. They're kind of mixed within the project. Now it didn't do too much for the final piece and you'll see that, but they're in there. <laughs> so this is where I thought that I made a really, really big mistake with those ice resin pieces. I had to read the bottle again because I thought that I had made a mistake by including that because they made it really hard for me to um, cut through the clay. You see it all right here on my blade. It was making it really hard for me to cut through the cane. So that's what made me start to worry about, oh my God, I put this in here, is it gonna work? This is Big Bertha. I've given her a name. I got this from Tiny Pandora. Um, and if I've stolen that name from Tiny Pandora, I probably heard it and now I wanna use it. <laughs> but she is my Big Bertha. I love this acrylic roller against my little one. This one really does the job watch all you gotta do is roll one time and you're done <laughs> that's an exaggeration but you know what i mean so i'm just um matching the pendant you saw me put the pendant up against there it's not really matching the product project too much but I was like I'm just gonna keep going anyway so I'm gonna put this through the pasta machine I put it through the pasta machine and that's what we have now and I'm just gonna fold it over so that we can kind of have that design going on on the front and the back because at this point I didn't think that I was going to put any backing on it but because of those shaved pieces I had no choice it was easy for me to smooth out the top but the back had all kind of um, shavings sticking out of it. So I had to put a backing on it. So we're just going to burnish it down a little bit. This really, really helped the top piece of the project. It did nothing for the sides after it was cut and it did nothing for the back. But burnishing did a lot for the top piece. This is a cutter that I chose because the pendant fits really well right there in the center of the pendant um, with only a little bit of the outside of the pendant showing, which was good because at this point, I thought that the colors weren't gonna be good anyway. So since the pendant was so large, it was gonna hide some of those colors behind it. So I'm just cutting out my shape for my pendant and it was very hard. You see how I'm trying to pull because of those ice shavings. Um, it, they made the project, it didn't make it really difficult, but it made it difficult that I experienced so far trying to cut out clay with my cutter. You see, I'm trying to wipe them away. They were sticking out everywhere. I ended up having to get my Dremel and um, you know, really sand that part to get them out. So now I'm just making a backing because the back of the pendant looked terrible. And I just got out um, some of my texture sticks and just gonna roll over this little piece and then cut it out and this will be my backing. Um, so because of the eye shavings, the clay didn't even want to stick to each other like they real like they normally would um, because clay always sticks to clay but if you put something like mica powder like we did before you know that that's an unsticking agent and these ice shavings were an unsticking agent so i decided to just roll back over because i had a lot of real estate with my um pendant it was maybe two times zero thickness so I had enough real estate to roll back over it, to roll it a little flatter and then recut it. And that would help seal my edges of the pendant, if you know what I mean. 
So it helped a lot. And it helped to smooth out the top a little bit more too where those shavings weren't sticking up. see it's a little bit better they're still sticking up and I still had to pull a few out but it was 100% better And here was another mistake that I made, was pressing down the pendant. I usually always do this when I do um, mixed media, is to press the pendant down or press whatever I'm doing, if it's rhinestones down in it to get a imprint. But those shavings made, I mean, I don't even, I don't even understand what happened. They, it, it made my pendant stick to the clay. And because this pendant, I think the yellow and the green, I mean the red and the green, the red and the green in the pendant was made out of plastic. So I could not put it in the oven. I had no choice but to tear it off of the clay. And it came off finally, um, but it also, the pendant is also kind of wonky on one side and you really can't see that in the video. But yeah, it wasn't the greatest idea to push that down into this pendant. So this is it after it is baked and the colors actually turn more into the colors that were in my head in the beginning, even though they didn't look like that unbaked. It's still not the red and green Christmas festive I was looking for, but it still works. It still works. See right here is where the imprint that I was telling you about of the pendant. So when you get ready to put it back in, whether you put it in with glue or resin, it's already outlined for you and all you have to do is drop it into that space. So I'm going to put mine on with resin. If I was to do this project again, I will admit this is one time that I probably would not use resin. I probably would have just glued it on and use some varnish for the outside of the pendant because um, sometimes you can use resin in a project and the resin will actually make your project look cheap and make your piece look fake if you're trying to go for something that looks um, lifelike like a stone or a gemstone resin can really make it look fake so um, that kind of happened with this pendant, but at the same time, I still liked it. So right now I'm just resining the outside. I didn't do anything to the back. I just left it matte because this is mine. I'm not giving or selling it to anyone, but you see what I'm saying about the resin on the sides. I'm gonna put the bell back on. So there it is. That is how my Christmas pendant came out. Now I do think it's beautiful. I just think that the resin was a little overbearing for this project. I also made another one. It's not really Christmas themed, but it came out okay also. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Love you. And I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Laughing all the way. Bells on bobtail.